Hello. Thanks for tuning in to another. My name is Miss Battle. We're in the book of James. I'm just excited that we even this far in the book, in the Holy Bible. But we, we moving right along. I cannot stop. Now it's too late to turn around now. If you have not grown from the time we started this Bible until now, I'm praying for you. That's all I got to say. Let's give God his glory. Father God, I just thank you, and I just ask that you give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I want to jump on to the recap, because the book of James is only five chapters, but it's so powerful. So let's just, just jump on to the recap first. And the recap is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrine. Okay. Quit listening to everything you hear. Quit believing everything you hear. Everything that is true, everything that is from God is in the Bible. Read it for yourself. That is my goal here, to elevate, to lift us up as a part of the body of Christ. We are all one family if we're in the family of God. Let's jump on to the book of James because, see, James is, is the author. James is the brother of Jesus that followed the disciple, one of the disciples that didn't believe in the beginning but believed in the end. He was converted. Uh, so that's who James is. He, he's actually the brother of uh, Jesus Christ. The reason why the book of James is so heavy and deep, although it's only five chapters, is because it's, it's acknowledging faith. People have this so twisted. I hear the scripture all the time, but they don't understand the scripture. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. But do they really know what they're saying? He's saying, let's just get into it, okay? Chapter 1, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Those 12 tribes of Israel is the, the, is the body of Christ, is the, the chosen people. But they've been dispersed throughout the ages, so now who, who really is? We don't know. We really don't know. So let's just move on. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who is willing to all liberally, and without reproach. It is, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. He's saying if you... Either you believe or you don't. Once we say we believe, believe it, really believe it, because that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things that you cannot see. Faith without action. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, we finna get deep because, see, faith is the evidence. The actions is the evidence of the faith. Okay, so don't say you, let's just jump into it. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Let's just, I'm going to jump on to 9. Let the, uh, 1 and 9. And let the lowly brother glory in the exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. Because a flower fades, because of, as a flower of the field is passed away. No, for no sooner as the sun rises, with the burning heat, then it withers, the grass, the flowers fall, and its beautiful appearance is 
perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuit. He's saying, if you are rich, you ought to be happy and humble enough. That's the thing. The rich man is, is just won't humble himself. But right here in James is saying, but if the rich man humbles himself, he's blessed. And if the poor man, if the poor man be exalted, he's blessed. So let's move on. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. This is 12, 1 and 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which is the Lord has promised to those who love him. Not everybody. Only he, his promises are for the ones that love him. Let no one say he's tempted. I've been tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it births, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. He's saying, you know, once you think it, once, the, once it's in your head, you're going to act it out. And that's what he's saying. If you can control your thoughts, do it. And you can by thinking about good things. But he's saying once you had that thought to do what you want to do, that brother, that brother, you thinking about deceiving somebody, you thinking about getting over, you're thinking about lust, you're thinking about this, you didn't just birth a thought. And once the thought is birthed, you will do it. And so once you did it, because it will happen, because you don't put the thought in your head, and the desire won't go away until you quench that lustful desire. And so that's what he's saying. Once you, once you've thought about it, then that's gonna act you. That's gonna get you to act upon it. And then once you act upon it, now you've separated yourself from God, because now that's what a division. Because you've acted upon it, and so that goes back to faith without works. Because if you have faith, then you will act upon it, and it will change your character. That's how we know who's in the faith and who's not. Because it's, it's not for us to judge. It's for God to judge. But it's, it's, it's our landmark. Faith, just like trials, is tell you, as a Christian, as a, in the body of Christ, if you are part of God's family, this is what James is saying. You will be tempted over and over and over again. Temptation does not stop. Trials, trials will come over and over and over again. Trials do not stop. So this is what he's saying. Trials bring about long-suffering perseverance. Let's read it. Let's just jump. Oh, okay. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Jump down to 16, 116. Do not be deceived, my brethren, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shade of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creation. The body of Christ, since Jesus Christ died, we are the first fruit of this Holy Spirit abounding. That's why we got to walk. We are living in the same age in that same day as according to God's day. We're still living in the last days, in the last age. So, the thing is, You're going to always be bombarded with things that of the world, okay? So, by having faith, 
showing that your character is is in a metamorphosis stage. You're growing, you're blooming, you're growing into something else, not the human nature. You've been, the human nature in you was baptized, buried, dead. Once you've been, once you receive Christ, you've been baptized with him, and when you come up from that water, your mind is what he's, what you've been baptized. It ain't the body. You, you baptize your, with the mind so that you can control the thought pattern, so you can start walking in self-control. We are buried with him. The old self is buried. Once you, once you uh, confess Christ, be baptized, you, it's not that you got to believe it. That's what it is. It's belief. You got to believe that that old you, that's what I said, is an old you. You're not the same. You're a new person in Christ. You have a new mind, but it needs to be cultivated because you don't change just like that. Just because you confess and been baptized and now your life changes. No, it doesn't work that way. The sanctification process is a lifelong process. So, 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. It just don't. Anger does not produce anything good. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and, and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Faith cannot save you. Faith does not save you. Faith is action. That when, if you have faith, here's, here it is. I say I have faith in Christ. I believe I'm a follower, okay? But I see somebody that's in need. And this is what James is saying. Faith is action. You can see a person in need, but don't help. You have no faith. Bottom line, that's the truth. Your faith is dead because you didn't help. And this is what James is talking about. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save you. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and do is not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he, what kind of man he was. Okay, let's jump down to 1 and 26. If anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one religious is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows, in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Keep yourself away from this world. This world will corrupt you. People that is of the world, and that's what he means, of the world. If you, if the people that like partying, like drinking, this, these are people of the world. People that running after money and got to chase this and got to chase women and got to chase men, chase money, chase pride. You, you know, you, all that is, all that is useless. That none of that, you, you will, oh, you deceiving yourself if you think you are part of the world and in the family of God, you're not. Chapter 2, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with a gold rings and fine apparels, okay, we're going to stop there because he's saying, now don't judge. Don't judge the man because, you know, you want to give the man that's got the money, the best seat in the best place because he, because he got money. Mm. And you want to tell the raggly one, the smelly one, sit over there, sit in the back of the church. God is not pleased with that. 
God is not pleased with that. Let's jump to two and five. Listen, my beloved brethren, God has not chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith and heirs. God, listen, my brethren, God has, has God not chosen the poor for this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? which he promised to those who love him. The poor man has got a place in the kingdom. Simple as that. He's got, because he's he just, he's poor. And he's been poor. And the rich man, he's going to have to humble himself because he's so worried about his riches and people getting over, people stealing. He's worried about making more money. He's worried about everything but God. So it's very, very hard for him to make it. But the poor, he said it. You ready? Read it for yourself. So let's jump on down to 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and, and yet stumble in one part, he's guilty of all. For he who says, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. So what he's saying is, just because you don't murder nobody, you're still getting the same judgment as the liar, okay? Maybe you, you're not a liar. You know, you walking in truth. You're not a liar. But you committing adultery, you, you still the same punishment. One, pun, one is no greater than the next. If you're going to live by the law, live by all the laws. People got that misunderstood, thinking because there's only Ten Commandments, there those ten, those ten major moral laws that you helps you can to see yourself, help you to realize. Because if it wasn't no law saying that should not steal, then you wouldn't know you a thief. So that's the purpose of the law is to let people know what, whom they are and what they are and what they're doing. The law shows us our faults, which it should. Now, if you're reading this Bible and it don't point to you, you better ask the Lord to give you some understanding because it should point to you, not to other people. When you read, you should see how bad of a person I am, period, point blank. Nobody else. Let's move on. Let's talk about faith without works. Faith without works is dead. What does it profit, my brethren? If anyone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, he's warmed and filled, but you do not give him anything which are needed for the body, that, what does that profit? But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. So the bottom line here is, and, and James is trying to really nail it home, is you cannot say you have faith and don't help nobody. Your faith is dead, period. And that's why he say, let's read. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see then, a man is justified by his works and not by faith only. They go together. Rahab, the harlot, also justified by the works when she received the messengers, the messengers and sent them out another way. Because Rahab helped the spies. That's, that's her faith, using her works. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I got a pot on. I forgot. I got the slide through here. <laughs> now, let me slide on back in here. <laughs> I'm not turning this video off. <laughs> okay, but now I can stop worrying about it. <laughs> Anywho. Come back. <laughs> Faith without works. Like, likewise, was Rahab the harlot also justified by the works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? 
For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Mm. Chapter 3, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. So while you trying to be a preacher, teacher, minister, you better, you better do it right. If it ain't from the Lord, if you have not been sent from God for this, then you want to do it for your own glorification, okay? You will be held stricter punishment because you want to lead other people. And if you don't have the, the understanding of God to lead other people, then you blind leading the blind. And they both fall into a dish, a ditch. So what he's saying is, if you desire, now that's a good thing to desire, to teach it. Once you know it, that's your job to teach it, to pass it on. But the thing is, don't desire some a gift that God has not given you. Because now you out of your you out of your lane. Um, you know, that was the problem. The 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 priest, <laughs> they they wanted to do, you know, the king job, okay? And the king want to do the priest's job. Stay in your lane because you are held accountable if it ain't coming from God. If it's just because you think you're knowledgeable and you want to share it. Don't you know the knowledge of God goes higher and higher? Don't you know the knowledge of God? There's You cannot obtain all of God's knowledge. There's levels. You got to go on it's a level thing. There's an order. So don't think you know everything and don't think you cannot be taught a thing or two. Because there's always knowledge in the word of God. Let's talk about taming the tongue, okay? My brethren, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in the world in the word he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put a bit in a horse's mouth that he may obey us, and we turn the whole body. Look at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven by a fierce wind, they are turned by a small rudder. Wherever the pilot desires, even so, the tongue. Is a little member of the body and boasts great things. And see how great a forest, a little fire kindle? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and set on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. That tongue can drive, can, can, lead you right on to hell, okay? If you don't learn how to control your tongue, because that's what he's talking about now, controlling the mouth. It will, because the tongue, we can destroy people by the things we say. We can destroy their character. We can destroy their, their self-image. We can destroy a person with our mouth. That is not good. Our mouth is supposed to build people up, edify people, help people, encourage people not to curse them. Oh, yeah, it's, it, I, I, hey, I'm here. I've said it. I can try my best, the desires, and do the right thing and just, just, I can be good all week. I can be good all month. But you hit a certain button, that mouth will just go. And I'm guilty of that. I stand guilty. But I also stand with confession because I know how the tongue can tear people down, which also will lead us down the road to hell. <laughs> eight. Three and eight. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. 
With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. How can you curse? How can you even hate somebody that God created? God created mankind, human. He wants us to love his creation. So, you got to, so when you turn down somebody with your mouth, you turn down God's creation, and you will be held accountable. Ten, out of the same mouth proceed blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Does spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Or can a grapevine bear figs? You get the point. You cannot. You're deceiving yourself. Thirteen. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in a meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Okay. Self-seeking envy. If you have self-seeking, then people don't want to admit it. That's the first step is a, first step is admitting it. So you got to admit, I'm, I'm a selfish person. I've been selfish. All I'm thinking about is myself. How can it benefit me? How can I have something? How can I, I? That's called selfish. Anytime you're using I, me, me, myself, and I, it doesn't benefit anybody. So if you're self-seeking, you want to be somewhere you're not, you want to elevate yourself, you want people to think more highly of you, you're being deceived. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing is there. But wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay. Yeah, I got another confession. Confession. I've been a hypocrite. I've been a hypocrite, and I'm saying and not happy about it. But it needs to be said. Confess to one another, and I'm confessing to you because that's what the Bible say. Confess to one another that you may be, that they may pray for you and lift you up. So I'm, I'm here to say, because a hypocrite, let's get it right. A hypocrite is a person that say one thing, but doing, but the actions speaks another language. You say with your mouth, but your actions, because practice what you preach. That's the bottom line. If you practice what you're preaching, yeah, I'm, I'm practicing in some areas, but not all areas. And that's why I say a hypocrite. Because he's saying the tongue, you can bridle the tongue. And what he means, what James is saying, he is, he's really hitting home. If a little bit can turn a horse around, a whole horse, and that's a heavy animal. If that little bit can turn a horse around and make it a horse turn around and do what he want to do. If that rudder, which is on a large ship, but it's such a small rudder that turns the whole ship around. Do you get it? Because the tongue is such a small thing, but it's got to turn the whole body around. Not half the body, the whole body, the mind, the body, and the soul has to turn. That's what we're talking about. Controlling the actions, your action shows your faith because your actions, your faith shows the, the growth in you. What faith with works, you got to have both. They don't, they're not separated. He said, you show me your, have I got to it? Oh, I, I didn't pass it up. You show me, <laughs> you show me your faith, then I'll see your works. You show me your works. I see your faith because a person that has faith helps. That's the bottom line. That's the double line. Bottom line. 
The evidence of faith, of your faith, is helping others. Rahab helped the spies. If you're not a helpful person with somebody, you could see a person, a poor person that needs something to eat and say, God bless you, I'm praying for you, but don't give them nothing to eat. You see what I'm saying? That's the word. So that shows your faith. You have no faith. Your faith is dead. Your works is dead. And you have nothing coming from God. So I'll show you my faith by showing you my work. So if I help somebody, that's showing my faith. And that's it in a nutshell. So what James is saying here in the book of James is, First of all, count it all joy when you go into diverse temptation, when you're going into trials and everything, because trials don't stop. They never stop. But count it because trials just make us stronger. The stronger we get, the, 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 power, the more power we have. So the book of James is saying, be thankful for trials. And he also saying, Faith without works is dead. So when we use that scripture, let's use it right. So when somebody tell me they got faith, I'm going to ask me, show me your work. What have you done? Who have you helped? Who have you blessed? If you can't bless nobody, you ain't. your faith is dead. The devil is a lie and the truth is not in it. We are being deceived. That is what the devil's job is to deceive us to think that we ain't got to help nobody, to think that we can say what we want to say and make it to heaven. You're going to talk your way right on into hell. Let's move on. Chapter 4. Where do war and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, that wars in the member in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and convict and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive it because you ask the mist. We sitting up here asking God to bless us here and bless us with this and bless, bless, bless. But God is saying, I'm not going to bless you because first of all, you still in self. Because he's saying you asking because you want to benefit yourself. You asking me to bless you with some money so you can go on the boat. <laughs> the devil is a lie, okay? That's the truth. When we sometimes we go to God, Lord, I need bless me, Lord, and bless me. I'm gonna bless others, and I bless me with. He said you asking for these blessings for your own gratification, for your own selfish needs. You're not asking for blessings to bless somebody else. Quit playing with the Lord. That's why you don't get it. So if you're still wondering why I ain't, why God ain't answered my prayer and God ain't blessing me yet because he know your motives is wrong. You ain't even figured it out yet But because you don't know your own heart. That's what the Bible say. We don't know our own deceitful Envious heart, <laughs> but once you once the Holy Spirit start dwelling within you, once you receive the Holy Spirit and it dwells within you, you start recognizing you. That's what the Bible is. That's the reason why we say, "Oh Lord, I've been so selfish," because now I recognize I'm a selfish person, not me personally, <laughs> but this is the idea of the scriptures. <sighs> I'm a lustful person. You know, lust, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an envious person. We don't realize it until we get into the word, how selfish we are. We are, I'm a selfish person, but I don't know I'm selfish. I'm thinking I'm such a great and grand person, but I'm just so selfish. Because all I'm thinking about is me. That's what selfishness is. You ask and do not receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers, adulteress. Do you not know the friendship with the world is an enemy with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain? 
spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy. But he who gives more grace, therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. So, you fooling yourself, if you think you can go out here and party, you think you can go out here and drink and smoke and wine and dine and commit all these things and then go thinking you a friend of God. <laughs> you deceiving yourself, baby. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You deceiving yourself. You are a, you want the world. You want everything. You want money. You want the cars. You want friends. You want prestige. You want a name. You are a friend of the world because these are the things that the world wants. And the Bible tells us if you are a friend of the world, you are not a friend of God. You're, you, you can't have company with both. So either you want God or you want the world. Simple as that. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lemme, mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. He's saying, clean your hands, your heart. Come clean with yourself. Confess your mess, you double-minded person. Because see, if you, you being double-minded thinking you can say this and, and then do that. That's double-minded. You're double-minded when you say, I'm a Christian, but I don't help nobody. That's a double-minded person. you double-minded when you say, I believe God, but I'm going to do this. You're not believing God. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Come clean with your faults to God. Come clean with one another. Forgive one another. Come clean. He's saying come clean because you cannot come to God until you come clean with yourself. Do not speak evil of one another. This is 11. 4 and 11. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who seeks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge someone else? Who are you? Come now, who, who, come now, you who say, today and tomorrow we will go such and such and such and such city and spend a year there and buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what your life for what is your life? It is a vapor and appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. And he said, don't act like you, a uh, God, you, you can control today and tomorrow. Don't act like you know you're going to be here tomorrow because you don't. Nobody knows when they're going to go. And so that's what he's saying. If you're saying, well, you're making plans, we're going to do this, I'm going to do this next year, I got my calendar scheduled for this next year, and you don't even know if you're going to live tomorrow. So what he's saying is, in your, in your planning, please say, if the Lord's will, we'll make it there next year. If the Lord's will... I'll be able to do this. Don't just think you the king of your own castle. <laughs> you the captain of your own ship. That God is not in control because you might not be here tomorrow. You keep thinking you will. Who knows? You might get hit by a car. <laughs> you just never know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lightning strikes too, you know. <laughs> okay, let's jump on to four. Come now. Oh, today and tomorrow. Chapter five. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your misery that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupt, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver are corroded, and your corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. 
You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborer who mowed your field, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reaper have reached the ears of the Lord. Check it out. He's just saying, be fair. Be fair. If a man work for you, pay him his right, his right wages. Be fair with him. Don't. Okay, just be fair. You know if you ain't fair. If you, somebody pay you, you, you paying somebody. If somebody said they gonna cut your grass for thirty dollars and they forgot to do the side, <laughs> you know, just example. And you want to give them twenty five dollars because they forgot to do the side. <laughs> but just be fair. I guess that was a bad analogy. But the the point is, <laughs> be fair. Okay, let's use a real life <laughs> analogy. Like Jesus said, I'm, I'm fair. I did not say I'll pay you a denaro. If I promise to pay you something, I promise to give you this to do that. Give this. Don't 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 shortcut. Don't say don't. I didn't can't give you this. Cause I know I said it, but I, I ain't got it. Or I know I said it, but they need some. I, don't cut. Don't cut corners. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. If you say you're going to pay this, pay this. Period. Simple as that. Therefore, seven, be patient. Verse seven, five and seven. Therefore, be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits on the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it to, until it receives the earthly and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Don't think God ain't coming. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back. Although you the, you got to be patient, you got to see the times, and you ought to know that he's coming back. He's saying, let your yea be yeas and your nay be nay. Don't say no more than that. Quit promising. Quit making oaths. You're only making an oath because your word ain't good. And that's why we make oaths, because put that on something. Believe that. Believe that. If you got to put that on something, your word ain't worth a dime. Let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. And once you establish that, people going to roll with that. They're going to know. If he said yes, he mean yes. Ain't no ifs and buts about it. If he say no, he means no. Anything after that. You fall into judgment. That's what the Bible says. But let your yes be yes and your no's be no's. And this is, um, the, what verse is this? 12, 5 and, five and 12. But above, but, uh, but above all, my brethren, do not swear, neither by heaven or by earth or by an oath, an other oath. But let your yes be yes and your no's is no's. At least you fall into judgment. Because you're making yourself lie. If you if you got to say anything other than yes or no, you're making yourself out of a liar, period. 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayers of the faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a natural... A nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And then he prayed again. And the heavens gave, and the heavens gave rain. And the earth produces its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and convert 
and cover a multitude of sin. And that is the book of James. And I'm going to read that last one again because you know what? We do have, um, that, that's, a miss, that's another missed one because I hear it all the time, cover sin, uh, what do it say? Uh, the death cover a multitude of sin. Get that right. It doesn't cover all sin. <laughs> it covers a multitude of sin. So, you, because Jesus Christ had already covered the sin. And that's the thing. That's why the law, that's why the law is, is it's a new law. And the new law is Jesus Christ covering our thought pattern, our guilt pattern, covering, because see the old law, the bulls and the sacrifices, it covers the moral sins, but it could not cover the conscience. Our, our conscience bothers us. And Jesus Christ said, I died to cover the you're not held captive. You've been set free. You do not have to let these thoughts pull you down, hinder you, keep you depressed, keep you down. You've been set free. Where the sun sets free, well, he, that's what he say. Whom the sun set free, which is Jesus Christ, you're free indeed. So don't let the devil keep you in bondage, keep you in chains, with the guilt of the things that you've done. Let that stuff go. You've done it. We've done it. We all make mistakes. Nobody perfect. You're not perfect, like James said, until you can control the whole body, okay? That's what it's all about. Not controlling some of the body. That little bit, you have to be able to control the whole body. Got to turn. Thanks for tuning in to another. My name is Miss Battle. The book of James, oh, work without faith, faith without works, it's dead. It's just dead, and it's not producing, it's not growing, and you will not make it with faith. <laughs> fake faith. Anywho, I'm so glad you tuned in. Oh, thanks for tuning in to another. My name is Miss Battle. I am praying for the body of Christ that we may grow in our faith, that we may have action showing our faith. What good is faith if you have no action? Have a blessed day.